Many consumers aren't aware, but the supplement industry is filled with products that don't live up to their label claims. This lack of regulation can lead to underdosed products, or worse, products that contain ingredients not listed on the label. The core of the problem lies in the manufacturing standards. The supplement industry often operates under very uncontrolled conditions. This isn't just a quality issue, it's a matter of consumer trust and safety. At DY Nutrition, we've recognized these industry shortcomings and refused to let our products fall into this category. We've shifted all our manufacturing processes to comply with pharmaceutical grade good manufacturing practices. This isn't standard practice in the supplement industry, but we believe it should be. It's about ensuring our products are safe, effective and truly beneficial for our customers. Consuming supplements that don't match their labels can have serious implications. It's not just about not getting what you pay for or failing to see results. It's about the potential health risks of unknown or mislabeled ingredients. This undermines the entire purpose of taking supplements. Our adoption of GMP is a step towards setting a new standard in the supplement industry. We want to lead by example and show that it's possible to produce supplements that are both effective and safe. This commitment to quality and transparency is what the industry needs and it's what the consumers deserve. At DY Nutrition, we're not simply manufacturing supplements. We're making a tangible impact. Through our unwavering adherence to pharmaceutical grade GMP, every product that we offer embodies our dedication to excellence, safety, and the health of our customers. This commitment reflects both my personal ethos and our brand's commitment to superior supplement manufacturing standards, emphasizing the importance of consumer safety and product integrity in the nutritional supplement industry. Okay. Today's guest, my very good friend, Chris Cormier. Welcome, Chris. You're the, you're the first guy to come into the shadow studio, <laughs> doing it live. Thank and you, you're the bro. first guy that's Thanks gonna for, smoke a joint with me. Thanks for having me. Live on there, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Chris is there, mate. Well, Anytime thank you, you want, man. I'm not gonna Anytime back, you want. I'm not gonna back down from it. All right. <laughs> I can never. <laughs> so, uh, let's tell Chris's story. Uh, Chris, I've known you well, I've known you a long time, but we got to be really good friends over the last, what, 20, 25 yeah. years, right? Like, yeah. you know. Yeah, man. Um, so let's start at the, at the beginning, because some stuff I know about you as a good friend, some I, I probably don't know too much. So let's start at the beginning, man. Well, where, where's your, where's your, where do you grow up? What, where did you grow up? What's your family? What's the background? I grew up in uh, Palm Springs, California, and uh, spent a lot of... Uh, a lot of history there in Palm Springs with a lot of celebrities, movies, uh, movie. It, it makes me think about golf. Yeah, know, movies, right? golf, yeah. and uh, celebrities there. And uh, but I lived in actual the hood of Palm Springs. So does Palm Springs have a hood? It has yeah, a hood. All right. Because it's not what the image that comes to my mind being the right. English person. I'm thinking desert, golf, nice people, <laughs> you know, yeah, Frank a lot, Sinatra. <laughs> a lot of people made that same mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but yeah, it was. Uh, they call it the North End. It was uh, is where I grew up, and uh, seven ninety Gateway Drive. Okay, and uh, I was born and raised there. And uh, everyone in it, most of the people. I mean, there's a uh, a lot of people made it out. Some people made it out. A lot of yeah. people did not make it out. And, Always uh, the way, man. And then uh, you know, I had a choice to stay there and just do that. And you know, could be a professional gangster if I wanted to be that. Um, but you know, you know, I, I love sports. I dressed. I mean, I didn't dress for the sports because I was wearing khakis and croquet sacks and the whole khaki suit thing to school every day. I was never was wearing shorts or nothing like that. That wasn't the thing to wear back in the day. Right. Uh, and uh, so you know, even going to PE, you know, I'm still never dressing up for PE because that's not cool. <laughs> but you're doing it. Yeah, I wasn't, I was, yeah, I was doing PE, but I wasn't dressing for it because then if I'm wearing those shorts and stuff, that's looked at as soft. Where no, I, I understand. So, I mean, like, it's yeah. nonconformist. It's yeah. got, in England, you're supposed to wear a tie <laughs> yeah. and, and, a, and a uniform, yeah? So yeah. I was just always, I just couldn't wear that tie, man. I was always rebelling about wearing that tie because it was like around your neck, like strangling you and making you conform to the system. That's how I felt. Yeah, that's how I felt. <laughs> so yeah, carry on. So you like, you're in this environment, and so when did you start thinking about like, hey, this is this ain't for me, man? Well, 
when I got that D in PE and, you know, my coach, my football coach gave it to me and I was like, what is that? What is that? I don't that know that means football, when you right? when you get a DMP, that's like almost you almost failed, and that's the physical. Uh, you, you mean you almost failed in your schoolwork? In, yeah, in the schoolwork. Right. But that was just physical school. It's only like, you know, PE is like when you you know doing the sports and stuff yeah. like that, which is it don't make any sense for a person who's like really in the sports. And uh, so that's that's when it was like, okay, I'm going to tenth grade. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna cut my hair. You know, because at that time you wearing you got the braids and you got the long hair and yeah. stuff. At that time, I was saying, I'm gonna cut my hair. I want to go to college now. I started looking at my grades and I'm like, you know, and then my immediate group of guys that I hung with, you know, uh, we we all changed our our tune. You know, going to the high school and then we was like, okay, then everyone's calling us college boys in the neighborhood and stuff. And it yeah. was like, okay, you know, I want to do something else and. Uh, you know, so I got into wrestling. I got into, uh, I upped my game into football. Um, I became a college wrestler. I got a, a scholarship, but I didn't have the grades to do the football because I was still making up from the D I had in PE throughout the rest of my year right. in, in school. So um, when I finally got to a C average, then I was able to get a scholarship in wrestling. Uh, but, you know. So that, uh, because the school system in America is is different from from England and Europe. <laughs> right. So, what does that mean to to get a scholarship? You get like you get to go to get further education and play sports for that. Yeah, that and then place, right? yeah, and they'll take care of you. You uh, yeah. they take care of you in all kinds of ways, like 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 an athlete gets taken care of, and right. and you know, even to this day, you know. But I the funny thing is when I was younger, I was bodybuilding in a way to where. I'm hitting the poses. I had a high school teacher of mine that was like, she was like, you should try bodybuilding. You have a good body. And so you're training for other sports. When, yeah, when did you for start? Because yeah. this is a, this is the thing I try to explain. Uh, yeah, I was training to people for from the states. Yeah. Like when you go to school or you go to college, you pretty much there's a good chance you're going to get introduced to weights, right? Because you have weights there in in the school, right? right in the college. Right, right. Where in Europe we don't have that. No. We just play soccer and and cricket and there's yeah. No, so you you got to like decide for yourself that hey I'd like to lift some weights and you're gonna find somewhere to do it. You're not like automatically introduced to it as you would be. Yeah, and so, then in the states, right? It's yeah, cool. and so that's the whole thing. Uh, <clears throat> you know the sports that Americans go through, and I I, I talked about this because you know when you go into bodybuilding, you want to have a certain mindset behind you, like you want to do something that's extraordinary like like in in football you want to ram your head through somebody yeah. like you have you have that in you got that to drive that, that, yeah you want to know if that's something you can learn <laughs> i think that's something innate that's but in my, the, in, my in, in my opinion that's something that's in people and they learn but when you pretty when, early that it's there yeah when you want to when you do it enough and you look for that you want that you know and then you carry that throughout in your life yeah. same just like you punching someone in the face same same type of thing it's like, you know, you can you got to have that nerve to be able to do something like that, yeah. you know. But, you know, like I, I was training uh, for football because I was smaller. Cause I, I started school at the age of two and three years old. So I graduated high school at 16. And that, I still had another year or two years that I should have been in school to where that that's, school that's normal in, in high school. Okay. So I never, so if you graduate at 16 years old, that means somewhere down the line, you started school too early. So I was, I was like, you know, I'm in, I was immature for my friends to be, they were all older than me. Yeah, okay. So I started with the weights just to catch up with them. And then I, my body started to So when was form that? How quickly. old were you? That was 12. 12, 13, you're doing yeah, sports. 12, and yeah. You get doing the weights as well. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you said at some point, like your, uh, you you know, you got bad grades. Yeah. You start to think this everything around me is like this is not what I want. I want to do something else, and he made that change. But didn't you feel like pullback when you, when you did that? Like you know, you're trying to get no. out of your environment. You yeah. Make people I feel mean, uncomfortable almost. Right. The people around you. No, I, the funny thing is everybody in the neighborhood, you know, they're cheering me on. Oh, that's good, man. Because that's they were good. like, man. You know, somebody, represent. somebody, yeah, you represent us. And the funny thing is that uh, my training partner at the time, uh, his name is Ray Bradley. 
he was pushing me in the neighborhood. It's like, man, because you'll see people come from jail and shit. You see them all, all buffed up. I'm like, damn. You know, that's, that's the people you looked up to yeah, when I was yeah. young. Tough you know, guys. That's, yeah, that's the guys you like, damn, man, Hooper came out of jail looking like that. Like, shit, I want to change. I want to make my body change like yeah, that, that's too. That's like some, some kind of a status, some kind of currency. Oh, yeah, in, oh, yeah. In the hood, right? If yeah. you're tough, really strong, you can look after yourself, then right. your people status respect is you. up, yeah. right? People respect you. Yeah. And uh, he, so he had a son. Uh, when we were training, we used to train in this house. Uh, we called the, the the dungeon. It was like he didn't have no other furniture in that room in his house, and that's where we lived at in his house. And so his son' name was Timothy Bradley. Timothy Bradley uh, was born um, right away. He's you know pushing him on the sit ups and the push ups, sit ups on the push ups, yeah. and he became a world champion. He fought some of the best. He still works as a, a commentator for ESPN today. And I knew him his whole life, and we grew up in the same neighborhood. And that's the that's the the wild thing because it's not many. It was gonna be not many people was gonna be like that coming from yeah. North Palm Springs like that. So, uh, yeah. So he fought Pacquiao. He fought. I mean, he fought you know on TV a lot. And he he's a you know I think he's a two time world champion. But so you he got was, a solid sports background, man. You're doing wrestling. Yeah. You're doing football. Start and I was doing, race. and I was trying to be a professional bicycle motocross racer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was riding BMX. I was doing skateboard. I was. I had a Dogtown skates. I had a GT. Uh, Can I still do that? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I right actually, now. I was just looking into skateboards lately. Yeah? I said, yeah, I just want to buy it for my son though because he wants he wants to do snowboarding. He said he said I could practice more on the skate. So I started looking into it more. Oh yeah, I had my Dogtown. I had my pizza grip on it. I had to, <laughs> had to shoot. I was riding in pools and shit when I was in in high in a uh, junior high and shit. That's cool. So you got some ability and a lot of things. And yeah. So when did it like the bodybuilding start to take over and you well, start to think this is this is the way I'm going. I'm not going to football or wrestling. This is you know. Yeah. Where I put well, my focus in. My high school teacher uh, Kathy Loria, she was like, "You should try bodybuilding." I said, "There's a bodybuilding show coming up in my high school, at my high school." In two weeks, you should go check it out. I said, I'll go, I'll go check it out. So I went there, and uh, I saw Mike Christian for the first time. He was guest posing. He was yeah, Mr. Wow. Cal. He was Mr. California at the time. He wasn't a pro yet, but yeah, but a- that's still a shock when you see. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> like people got people got to remember, there's no internet, right? <laughs> right. So there's not like the first time you see a pro bodybuilder. There's nothing preparing you for that because it's look. I saw a guy in England, uh, his name was Tony Emmett. I don't know if you ever heard of him because he's a British guy and he won uh, NABA Mr. Universe a couple of times and, and they went out to live in California, I think, or something. But uh, he was the first bodybuilder I saw and he must have just competed or something because he went mm-hmm. to a local gym and uh, it's like, like it's, it looks like he got no skin. You know, right, like, right. And just, I know that's funny. Yeah. The first thing you think of when you're that young, like the thing yeah, you yeah. think of in your mind is like, because I thought he had bowling. To me, my I thought he had bowling balls like yeah, on his yeah. back. I yeah. couldn't. I didn't understand how someone's back would be so 3D and with muscle. I was like, damn, that shit took me way back. I was yeah, like, that put a big impact on you. Yeah, right? big impact. Sometimes being present can seem nearly impossible. Being in the moment, life. Can get in the way. Just... I guess you don't want the suspense then. Okay, here we go. I'm going to tell you all about Blood and Guts pre workout. I mean, that's why you're here, right? Where energy, focus, endurance, and muscle pumps become the forefront of your training. Oh, he's, he's focused in. I'll leave him be. Okay, I guess this is the video then. You're right. There's only one question you really want the answer to. But what is that question? Did it do the job? That's all we need to know. There you have it. Blood and guts pre-workout. It gets straight to the point. Can I get out of this recording booth now? Yeah, man. So how many seconds you got in Arnold? <laughs> Six in a row. Are, are, are you recording that? Is that real? <laughs> 
Oh, like, it was like, like, like Chris thinks I'm taking the piss. But it, was actually a, it was actually a serious question. I just don't know. God, oh, it's a quite damn. a few. A few. <laughs> I was like, damn, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, six, man. What? Fuck, six in a row, dude. Motherfucker. Dude, I was pissed. I was four, you won four of the Ironmans, right? The week before. Is it a week oh, before, right? Four in a row, yeah. Is it a week before or two weeks? Uh, one week. One week. Yeah, I, I was oh, pissed. Man. I saved my questions for the... We got that anyway. We got that anyway. <laughs> I just don't want to start flowing and then... I know, I know. Let's make sure that I we're know. clear first, you know? <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. So I'm six times Mr. Olympia. And you're six times <laughs> Arnold runner up, man. <laughs> That's the worst place yeah, in the six, whole six. house. It's the worst in the whole house. You like, yeah, and then you shit. got your hopes up thinking. <laughs> Just <laughs> see, but the thing is, a man, little bit more. The thing is, though, like you was there at a couple of them. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I just feel like the eye test did not tell me I didn't win the show. When I'm looking at the thing, and I'm like, I feel like I beat Flex, and I feel like I beat Jay in '04, and I feel like uh, I don't know. It, it, it was just weird, man. I, I think I could have got two or three of those things. And then when Dexter beat me, he was the only, he was the first time he ever beat me before. And that was in 05. Was Arnold? Yeah, that was 05. That was the last one I did. And people say, you know, I left Weeder and I left Weeder for uh, Muscle Tech. But the thing is, though, you know, Weeder was penny pinching me the whole fucking time, dude. Yeah, but here's the thing with Weeder, right? I mean, you know, you're around there and how it works, really. Yeah. Uh, you got the Weeder company and Joe Weeder and whatever he wants, the publishing company, the supplement company and everything right, like that. Right, And then you got a contest promoter. In those days, it was normally Wayne, Wayne D'Amelio or then at the Arnold would be Arnold and... Uh, Lorimer. Jim Lorimer, yeah. Cool guy, Jim Lorimer. Yeah. Um. So the promoter is a separate entity from WIDA, and then the judges are, are coming from the MPC. So the judges are separate from the promoter and WIDA. Yeah. So people have this idea that Joe WIDA can somehow influence the contest. Well, I, think, I, I don't think he can because uh, shit. It, it didn't, can, it didn't can, help me. He can I, want what he want, but the thing is, you know, we be in uh, this is why stuff like that comes up. You know, we in Amsterdam. We, you know, we did the show in Amsterdam that yeah, year, yeah. and we are, we've been on tour for a few weeks now. And you know, Ronnie's there. Ronnie, Ronnie beat me. I took second. But you know, before we get to the show in New Orleans, the GNC uh, show. You know, we uh, you see uh, Wayne get off the phone with Joe, and uh, Gunther is over at Joe's house posing for him at his house. I've never been to his house, so Not I, don't know, I don't know what that's like. But <clears throat> he was telling him, hell, I want, you know, he should be in the first call out, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And so I was just like, so that, that made the notion think that maybe he's got some type of influence, but, you know, who knows. But I was, that's all I needed to know to be pissed yeah, <laughs> yeah. when I saw him in the first call. <laughs> and then I went off on him after the prejudging in the uh, in the lobby. Lane? No, fucking Gunther. Okay. Because he was, <laughs> I was like, I was like, don't fucking tell me. Because <laughs> his wife was like, oh, Chris, you always plays good. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm, like, I'm supposed to play good. But don't tell me he's going to win the fucking symmetry round over me when he's never beat me in the symmetry round. All of a sudden... Yeah, you know you got this shit. So we 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 had a had a, had a go at each other in the in the lobby. Is that the one that Gunter won? He beat yeah. Ronnie after the yeah. shortly after yeah. the Mister Olympia. Yeah, and was he in the Olympia that? Like, yeah, and then where did he get like? I think fifth or okay fifth or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. No, because uh, I mean, when I <laughs> so when cool. I first uh, signed with Weeder, then I was going to compete in the Olympia for the first time. When did you sign with Weeder though? Um. Oh, that time when you well, came to like the Olympia? It was like 91. Was it after the... Was it well, after what the, it was, it was, after leading, up, it was leading up to my first uh, Olympia. Like after the second night of Champions, that's when I signed with him. The second, not the first. The second night, no, not the first one. Because the first one uh, was uh, Tom Platts and the WWF 
for opening the federation or not they were offering me big money and i was like oh i, I was in that was in 90 though. right yeah but it was a good thing because it forced weeder's hands because he, he's not gonna oh, give bro. you anything if he don't i need love to. i yeah. love it because i'm like oh shit we got two federations we yeah. can go <laughs> and so, i saw they was handing out money to, yeah, uh, well, to like weeder didn't want to lose his people so he started giving out contracts barry demay had a big contract yeah. That, I remember that shit. So the thing yeah. is, I just signed with Weeder, so I'm now the Weeder guy, right? And Lee Haney has just left Weeder or whatever. He just signed with Twin Lab before the Olympia. So the word, the rumor was the new guy, the white guy as well, right? Is signed with Weeder. So you know, Weeder gonna want him to win, and like Haney just signed with a, <laughs> Haney just signed with another company, Twin Lab. So. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. He won, I got second, and yeah, that, that was Haney fair. Went, that was yeah. fair. It was yeah, good enough, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he wanted to influence anything, he didn't have much. But it was it was that element. That. It was it, I feel like with that little, little bit of that element, too, like there was like most of the white guys got onto the cover, and the, the black guys had a harder time getting on the cover. I yeah, know, but Lee, I Lee mean, had uh, many covers. you could have speak to Joe Weider and tell you. He just, Joe? Like, <laughs> it's all about numbers, man. He's like, if the white guy's on the cover, I sell more. It's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, Joe. It, it, it's all he about was, the money, right? You know, though, he was money. funny. He was cool. He was cool with me, though. But he was just like, Chris, I don't, I don't need you, and I don't use you on nothing. I just like you as a bodybuilder. And and you know, when I first met him, uh, Paul brought me in on his his meeting. Say, oh, this is my. He said, just wait out here. And yeah, like, yeah. When I come out, I'm gonna <laughs> slide you in to to meet Joe. Take a look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I said, this is my friend Chris. Like I was an amateur still. Yeah. He was like, this is my friend Chris. He's gonna. Uh, to the USA in two weeks. And so he said, oh, he said, uh, he said, let me see what you look like. He said, he said, you got any, he said, you got any legs? I'm like, that was like my best body yeah, part. Yeah, He's yeah. like, at the time, I said, yeah, I got legs. And I put my pants down in his office and I flexed my legs. He was like, he's like, oh shit. He's like, he said, let me see your upper body. So I took off my shirt. So I'm standing in my underwear in his uh, office. And you know, I'd already been training with Robbie Robinson and all these people. I had my posing was on point, everything was on point. Uh, Gary Stride, and all those guys got me ready to be a pro before the pro. Yeah. So it was like he was like, oh, he's like, don't he's like, don't shoot with anybody, don't shoot with anybody. Come back and see me after the show, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sign you to a contract. Yeah. So I leave that motherfucking place in tears. I'm just driving like. Made it. Fuck, I did it. Yeah, I did that shit. I was like, man, I said, you know, that's that's when it's like you leave there, like I accomplished some shit that, you know, everybody who was anybody been through those doors. You know, that, 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 that was the dream. I mean, you know, the younger yeah. guys that listen is a whole different ball game now with the internet and there's so many different avenues to make money and promote yourself and et cetera, et cetera. But like then bodybuilding was like, the Weeder magazines. That yeah, that's like the you, thing. It was get in there, man. And now the thing, it wasn't the, the money was like secondary. I felt yeah. at the time it was like for you to get the validation of being being one of those guys. Yeah. That was it's more. A very that was the group. most. Yeah, that was the most important thing was to be validated. You know, and to be in the magazines, that's your validation also. Yeah. Because there was no just anybody in the magazine. Everybody was substantial. Yeah, and if you got a something. cover as well, then <laughs> even more so. And yeah. you wouldn't believe like all the places in the world that that magazine got to, like you know, Eastern Bloc, closed borders and everything. But they smuggled. Oh some, yeah, smuggle some muscle builder in there, or, oh. or you know, weeder magazines and stuff. The so, jails. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. You everywhere fucking, people know you everywhere. So it's yeah, you, like... you go to the strangest places and people would know you just from the magazine now it's like even more because of the internet but then you'd be like wow these people here know me just from the magazine i right? remember uh, i was in bulgaria and i was uh out doing our appearance over there at this gym this guy comes up hey you know i'm with i don't know he, he was the heavy heaviest guy <laughs> that was in prison in bulgaria yeah and he was uh, still running things and he was like he wanted a photo and i was I was trying to sell him at the time, but he was like, I was like, oh yeah. He said, you, he said, he was like a photo of you. He's a big fan. I saw, I said, I saw a sign that said, I said, give this to him person, tell him thank you so much for yeah. his support and this and this and that. So I was like, I was like, holy shit. That yeah, shit tripped me those out. Those Eastern Bloc countries like Russia and stuff as well, it still uh, exist. You know, they they remember all the, the magazines. I, I went to uh, Moscow. So I'm with uh, some guys from, you know, organized crime looking after me and uh and then 
Russian special forces, Spesnaz, they got in touch with me because they, when they were training to become officers, the top guys in the 90s, they, my oh, picture yeah, was all yeah, on yeah. the wall in the gym and everything. Right. So they took me to the uh, to the base. They closed the whole base down. I mean, this special Russian That's special forces, the whole base in Moscow for the day. We had lunch, drinking vodka, that we did shooting, everything, like a day in honor for me. And mm -hmm. like in England, there's no way that, that's never going to happen, you know. They're not going to get some acknowledgement from some <laughs> part of the system, right? You know? Right. <laughs> yeah, so it's amazing where those magazines reach to. Yeah, I always wonder about that. I always wonder do the do the king and queen of England would they invite you after you won like six? No, but six here's the thing, titles. man. I've always been like anti-establishment. Like, that's how I grew up. So I wouldn't want to be acknowledged <laughs> by these people. I don't, I don't think they're, well, I know they're not good people. It's just, a, <laughs> it's just a, an image, you know, that people fall for. Tea. So <laughs> I wouldn't want to be. <laughs> uh, want you know who Jimmy Savile is? Uh. Uh, Jimmy Savile was like a personality. He was like a, a DJ, a TV personality in England. And uh, after he passed away, it, it came out that he was like a prolific uh pedophile oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh i was gonna was say very, that but i want to say he was like it. the closest friends <laughs> with the royal family and a lot of elite people and you know it didn't come out until he died but it of came course. out and uh yeah just the establishment man i don't have any interest yeah, in being acknowledged by them and the mr olympia that means something to me because the judges and the, the fans and they acknowledge that you were the best at what you're doing so that's yeah that, that's some acknowledgement so yeah, you got yeah. you went from Palm Springs at some point to go so, to yeah, the Gold so Gym, me, which was so at that me, point that was the mecca then. Yeah, like, yeah. everyone was training there. But so let me tell you back uh, when I was in school, with the the school thing with the Mike Christian. So once that happened, uh, he she wanted to introduce me to her boyfriend. Her boyfriend had a stack of magazines from 1970 to the present, and he is just like he showed me like five poses. We the compulsory poses. Said this is the ones you need to know. These are the magazines you need to read. He went, yeah. and so I just like spent those days, just like everyone spent those days and nights, uh, all the lights off. You got a flash flashlight, and you're still finishing off that book, yeah. and cover to cover, you're reading and everything in it, and uh, absorbing. It was the, golden, man. Everything. I remember I had some, because I had some friends and their older brothers. You know, they used to work out or something, and they had mag they they all start like right. donating all these magazines to me. I had the little old Iron Man, remember the old little? Oh yeah, little I, had, ones? I had the little one. It was really good Muscle training builder, information in there. And then the, you got the Weeder magazines that and the was Beef like, It. Remember yeah, Beef It? Beef it from, uh, <laughs> Robert Kennedy. I love Muscle it. Mag. Oh yeah, I had all that. I lost all my magazines in a in a flood. I had them in the basement, and it got flooded, mm -hmm. so I lost them all. But yeah, it was, yeah, you know, it, it just transport you to a different world right yeah so you're but, sitting in palm springs but you're reading this thing i'm sitting in birmingham in england in the rain and i'm reading this thing and you're just thinking about these guys and and the what they've done and the lifestyle yeah. and everything and like you know everything starts with the dream right with the thought you gotta if you don't dream about it if you don't believe that you can possibly do this thing then i'll guarantee that it won't happen in the impact from pumping iron yeah, all, all that stuff meant so much, and I even still watched it the other day when I was on this trip I'm on right now. Just I was just like just remembering how, how much I love this shit, and what, and I and I know I got all you know with how much money you're gonna make from this or how you know the content yeah. and all that stuff, but that was just a, for the pure love of it was a totally different feeling for me, yeah. and that 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 shit was uh it, it you know that was that's what sparked my whole life was you know coming from where I come from. And then I'm saying, okay, I want to start going to Venice. I want to start driving up there once a month, buy a T-shirt, buy a magazine, look and see who I can see. Get inspired. Through. Yes, who I can see from the gate. You know, I see, you know, Mike Christian, the guy that I saw first. I see him walking through with, uh, you know, Charles Glass and all these people. And I'm like, oh, man. Then I go to the beach. Then you see, uh, uh, you know, Craig Munson down at the beach, fucking pressing seven plates. I heard plates. about that guy, man. Big ass dude. Yeah, he, uh, he actually came to Palm Springs. He's like a three at the time a three hundred pounder that'd be in shape. Wasn't it something to do with the gangs or something? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he did some prison time and he came out of prison. Right. Actually, a nice guy. Well, he and never. Uh, come, he didn't like going to the competitions. 
Uh, he was guest posting. He was, he was in a different federation, I think. Right, okay. But it was never like, you know, like a USA champ or something like that. But he just, uh, and he's still, you know, still alive today and he's still just a legend, you know. And so that, so I'd see that and then I'd drive back to Palm Springs. And then at the time it was only like Bob Birdsong and Rachel McClish was living in Palm Springs at the, at the time. So it wasn't like too many people. What about so Frank Zane? It's not down there? Frank Zane was at Frank, yeah. Frank Zane ha Haven. And I, I used to go and I see him at the post office sometimes. I speak to him. Or sometimes I just fucking stalk his house, just go by and see if I could see him outside there. And then I, it was just, my, my life was just a, revolved around that, yeah. you know, that whole element. And at the same time, I was wrestling still and playing football and still doing wrestling one weekend, a bodybuilding show the next weekend. And then I was like, man, I'm just gonna, I was in college, I was in college and I was like playing football and then I was bodybuilding all at the same time. So I wanted to move. I was like, man, I wanna move and be, cause I know Sean Ray and those guys lived in Fullerton. Yeah. Um, uh, John Brown, all those guys. So I wanted, to, so I moved up there and, and then I was going to school there and then I messed around and went to one of the college practices that are my old college, College of the Desert. And the coach is like, Chris, can you just come play while we're here? Uh, and my, my coach passed away now. Um, and I just said, yeah, you know, he came and moved all of my shit down, back down to Palm Springs. Uh, Coach Norman, Mormon, and uh, I played one more year. As soon as that football year was up, because I was in between classes, I'm going to do triceps, I'm going to do some type of work, because it was just on my mind all the time. I was in business. And you got the diet pretty down. business. Yeah, at the time, eating a lot, eating a lot of fucking. That's how I was messing with the orange ruffy and shit until yeah, I learned my yeah. lesson with that shit. <laughs> I, <laughs> I heard about that in the magazines. Yeah. <laughs> the we, don't, we don't have that in England. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then uh, I'm in class and I'm just writing down Teenage America. Because at the time I was really young. I didn't, I didn't I've been won nothing yet. But Teenage California, Teenage America, Mr. USA, Mr. Olympia. You write this down? I was writing it down. Yeah. And I was writing it down, just looking at it. And the teacher's talking or whatever. I'm just looking at this. And I just looked at the door and I was like, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go do this. And I just picked up my stuff. I didn't say nothing. I just walked out the door and then I just never went back. I just went to uh, start making my way. My mother was like, if you wanna be a bodybuilder, you need to go and be where they are at. Yeah. And it's not here, not in so this she, neighborhood. So she wasn't worried that this is, you know, you're gonna waste your time or this no. is something strange or no. something like that. She was just all in on That's it. Cool, just like man. whatever. You support, you know? Oh yeah, she was my, she was she was like my first believer that was like she was like giving me twenty five hundred a month to wow. so that was gonna be my that was my first real contract with my mother. Yeah. And She's she, your first sponsor. Yeah, first sponsor and she was like, just do I want you to be able to focus on what you need to focus on without worrying about too oh, much that's, money. That's amazing. And man. I was like, damn. So yeah, so you so know, now my, you better do it, right? Your oh yeah, like, and it means something to you because yeah. you, you feel like it's gonna hurt your mother's feelings if you don't win these shows that back, she's. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, I, had, I did have to pay it back. Trust me. <laughs> so, so then you know, I got my apartment in Venice. I'm training in Venice. I know anyone there yet, and uh, that's when I met uh, uh, Rico McClinton, and we just kind of like looked at each other from across the gym and he's like, he flexed on me, like he showed me a body, one of his best body parts. I showed him a yeah. best body part and then we just started laughing like from across the gym and then we met and said, what's up man? You know, Chris, we, we started hanging out like almost every day for, you know, for years to come after that. And trained he was- together as well. Trained together, worked together at the Roxbury nightclub, uh, fought together, everything happened. We did everything together, ate together, cardio together. Uh, he was friends with, with Flex Wheeler. I wasn't friends with him. So he was like the the, the bridge between us both. Yeah. I remember um, he used to train with Flex and, uh, and yourself. And Glass, yeah. Sometimes Paul Dillette. Right? Yeah, yeah. Paul Paul came later on. Paul, that was a whole other story, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Cause, yeah, because when he first came in, we was like, 
Look at look at this guy. He's like, you know, he don't got no fucking legs. He's because he's, he's like still so tall, yeah. and he had these big ass wide shoulders. But he wore pants the whole time. He never wore shorts, and so we didn't really speak to him when he first came in. You know, when someone comes to your neighborhood, you don't just hey, yeah. buddy, hey, take so, some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he. Uh, so I remember one time he went to go pose, and we were like, oh shit, he's got some big arms and shoulders. You know, he had that big body. Yeah, yeah. And then he pulled his pants down one day, and we was like, holy shit, look at his fucking calves. Quads, calves. Look at his calves. Yeah, I have fucking, it was big. And so after that time, that's when, uh, you know, we started, you know, he started, you know, being cool with us, and we started talking and stuff. And we uh, we hung out really, really tough. He was like a, he, we actually lived together at some point. And uh, just got really close over the years, but he became part of our group. And, uh, you know, we re-ruled that gym, though. That was a shit. Well, did you train with Charles? Like, was that a regular thing, or was that just some Charles recruited me. In, he recruited me into the into the game. I was with Robbie, as I said before. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, and Robbie, me and Robbie, uh, we had went our separate ways a couple times during our relationship, but we always make it back to, you know, to each other. But... You know, he just started basically asking me, I want he want to train me and stuff like that. I said, I don't really have money to be paying you because I got to take care of so much yeah. of the stuff. So oh, don't, don't don't worry about the money. But I'm, I'm sure he said he said I saw some I see something in you. I know you're gonna you're gonna make it uh, in this sport type of thing. And then you know I started training with them, but I wasn't training with those three guys. It was I was training. We were just boys. Okay. And then that's how that happened. So who do you think you learned like? You learn stuff off Robbie, you learn something off Charles, you learn well, a bit here, you learn a bit there. The, fun, the funny thing was more like, Robbie was like, he was like getting me into the, you know, the mindset, the, you know, I was like a soldier, you know, I was like, we'd, we'd, I'd pick him up every morning, we'd go to the gym, as soon as we, before we hit the door, he'd walk in, he'd turn around, he's like, as soon as your, floor, as soon as your feet hit this floor, it's just me and you. There's nobody else in this gym, and this is what it's gonna be. As soon as you go, let's go. Yeah, and then, cool. as soon as we go into the gym, it's just like tunnel vision. Gotta be in the right frame of mind, right? Yeah, yeah. So he was teaching me stuff like that, and you know, we'd walk the beach uh, daily after we eat or whatever, and just talk bodybuilding, talking his experiences, his, you know, his mindset behind the posing, the whole. You know the things he went through with his career and stuff, and just we did this on an almost you know weekly, at least three three times a week, four times a week. Did that, and just learning, 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 and then uh, did the same with uh, uh, with Gary. Gary <clears throat> taught me you know about his career, how he made money. He gave me little ways I could make money uh, when you go to Europe, you know asked to do he said this is what i did like he said his wife left him he had nothing he said he, he got with burn body back in uh in europe and burn would take him to different gyms he would go do a training session pose a little bit <clears throat> he was making a thousand bucks a day doing that and he said he turned his life around because he just worked every day Making a thousand bucks a day, yeah. going to gym, to gym, 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 gym. Uh, you could do it back then. Because, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, <coughs> people couldn't see you, right? right? So, if you did a seminar, if you did an appearance, wherever you went, would be would be a sellout because that's like the only chance you're going to see this guy in in the flesh. So people are making a lot of money yeah. touring around. Of course, it's pretty pretty tough. Um, yeah. And then and then Robbie tried to teach me, you know, the my muscle connection thing. But you know, you know as well as I know, uh, Dorian, that if you're not ready mentally, you can't do it. Yeah, you got to be so ready mentally to do it. That's the only way you're able to release your mind enough to even go to that that type of area. Yeah, you just got to like let everything. You gotta yeah, be inside the muscle yeah. almost. Yeah, and you and everything you say. So so let's say, but it burned and hurt so much at the young age. I was like, whoa. I said, man, I'd rather go a little heavier and have less pain in that muscle yeah. so I can get more reps. I thought that was more important, but it actually wasn't. No, nope. it was the wrong thing, and I didn't learn that till later. Till you know, I, I uh, worked out with you, but even though, even so, then 
you know, even when, uh, you know, through the years, you know, but it took a lot of doing the work, the, doing the right repetitions the right way, a lot of years, a lot of years. And then <clears throat> I trained with, I trained with uh, Glass. Glass is more into the angle of the, what you're trying to hit in and try to get uh, some development that way. Yeah. That that can only get you so far to me, to me. And then, uh, but he wasn't really tripping you know, I on. I think, Chris, I think if you've got a wheel, yeah, the wheel works, right? It rolls. So right. Don't try to reinvent it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I get it. So, so then once, you know, whatever, got some development, whatever, but, you know, I was still honing my skills in the posing room and stuff like that, getting older. Then I think I, I saw you and uh, you had retired now. But we, we, we'd be cool. No, I met you it. before I retired. I met no, you no. like when I first no, came. No, I know. Yeah. Oh, I was just talking about the training part. Oh, yeah, yeah, when I yeah. When I was saying how when I went to, we were in the Middle East at the time. After yeah, we were in uh, Qatar. Qatar. Qatar, yeah, so. In the guitar, I'm like, I'm training. You like watching me. You're like, Chris, <laughs> you like, you swinging the weight around. What are you doing? I'm like, <laughs> I'm all like, this. I'm not swinging the weight around. <laughs> I'm like, what are you right, talking you, about? You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> we're, we're creatures of habit, right? So you don't know you're doing something sometimes until so somebody's like, hey, you know you're, you're doing this, right? And you're creating some momentum. And, uh, and you're like, and I'll just like slow it down a bit. And I'm like, this guy don't know what he's talking about. I'm fucking swing up, swing back and forth. My fucking body's like, <laughs> and then you're just like, okay, cool, all right then. And then, uh, and then later on, I think uh, you had talked to me about stuff. You said you just just come train with me. I've been telling you for a long is, time, though, man. I was in my straight deep prime, and you were like, Chris, you need to, you just come to England and. We need to do this the right way. So you Isolation, can, that's what yeah. I was telling you. Like, uh, yeah. I could see, well, and we'll talk about it in a minute, but I could see that you had a lot, like, fucking, too many things, man, too many people, too many things pulling. Too many uh, people. Too many distractions. Too many. And, uh, and you know, the, you, you got to focus, as you did when you were young, what you were doing, you were reading the magazines, you were writing down on a piece of paper what you want to do yeah. and you were just thinking about this and focusing on this and focusing on it and, and at some point then things started pulling you out of that yeah. out of that focus yeah right? and that's what i was you started observing meeting, i was just like take yourself out of everything man because i was uh you know i was a you know when you have a, a heart like mine and you open to people stuff like that you know not everybody's got good intentions for you when you when they meet you and my mind, I thought, you know, people did. I didn't understand that part at that time in my life uh, until I got, you know, taught that. But, and my mother said the same thing. She was like, she's like, Chris, I didn't learn different things about people until I was around 40 years old. I just don't yeah. want to, I don't want to see you go through that. And so she was trying to tell me different stuff like that too. Cause, you know, um, I pressure myself like, if I don't win this show, I need to go back to school. I need to go back and do something because I'm not going to be the body I want to be. Well, that's, you know, this is kind of a good, like a negative motivation almost. Like, I fucking got to do this. Like, I you put yourself in a corner, man. Then you got, if you're in a corner, you got to fight, right? There's no there's nowhere do else it. to go. Yeah. So I was saying, I got to do it. So so the thing is, you know, back to my the, the training aspect. Um, and then, you know, Jim Manuel was saying the same thing. He said, man, if you go spend three months with, with Dorian. I said, I, he said, I think you would beat everybody if you did that. And, you know, and then, you know, then I was like, man, I think, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm here. I already got my system down there. Cause I was hardly even going back home to Palm Springs. Cause I was like, I didn't want to be out of my yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. But well, you know, if you, you think it to, through, if you think it through. You need to be comfortable. You need to have some kind of support system. But if you think it through, you know, I could be anywhere in the world. I was getting paid every month, no matter what, from my sponsors. And I, if I would have did, and that's the thing, you make one decision to go one way or, the, or another way, that's going to affect the rest of your life. All of your life. And all, all your, your and, 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 and your, and your legacy. So when, when did it start? Like, you think you got this focus you got to Venice. You started to be successful. You turned pro. When when did it start to be like, hey, Chris, 
there's parties going on, there's girls, like, uh, when did that start to, like, eat into your time and your focus? Uh, well, yeah, that, they, they have always been, they always been there as far as, like, I used to, used to bounce at 18 years old on up into my, until I was 24 when I turned pro. Yeah. So I was always in that element. Right. Always. And for five, five days a week. And, that's why I was like, no. I was, I was like, you know, I was comfortable in that element because that was my workplace. I was like, from 10 till 2, I'm up and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, for that, even when I was growing and getting to higher and higher in the rankings of, you know, national team champion. Uh, you're there, you're working, but you're, yeah. not, you're not taking drugs, right? Or no, 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 or not drinking. You're not, just not, in that environment. I'm in that environment. You know though. the people. Yeah, I know the people, and I know that environment. So then, when uh, when all that came to be, uh, you know, as you get better and better, there's more and more people want to be uh, yeah, around. Man, it's or, it's a, it's like a light, you know. Yeah, uh, and the moths yeah. come round, and it's not like they're bad people with bad intentions. They just come around because it's good to be around you, but they're not yeah. thinking about that may have some yeah, and they don't consequences have, on They don't give a shit how that's going to affect you. Right. And it's not in have, their thoughts. And the aspirations that they have is nothing like the aspiration I have. No. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you got to be careful who you surround yourself yeah. with. And you know? that's the thing that, you know, some of the younger guys, uh, I, I just try to mentor people like that, you know, just being like, hey, you just got to watch this because this element's going to be there. And it's going to be up to you yeah. to where it's so whether you can, it's, yeah, it would stand. You this know, it, it was situation. one of the reasons why I never moved out to the States or move out to California because of that. I knew mm. there would be more distractions and I knew Weeder would pull on me and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So if I'd have moved out to California, man, and pff, there's a very Who good knows? chance I'll be two or three times Mr. Olympia, divorced right. much earlier than I was because right. just. Yeah. It's hard when it's around you, man, and you're like you've worked so hard, and like, ah, shouldn't I have a little, a, a little, little reward? Here? <laughs> yeah, a little reward. It's but a little I'll, reward I'll can turn little, into a, you yeah, know, something else, all, right? And that's the thing. I I was feeling it. I was feeling like it was like a pressure a pressure release. Where I was like, okay, let me chill, and I'll, I'll get back into it on yeah. Monday, that type of thing. Uh, but you know, with my genetics, I think it, it would have did me better to do less shows than what I did also. Yeah. And, uh, you know, kept the weight on throughout the year because most people I'm going against, a lot of people that compete in 10, 10, 12 shows a year. Well, I, you know, like, I kind of like very analytical about it. That's why I didn't compete much because I'm like, once you get to that pro level, right, who knows what of your potential you've achieved, but it's, it's most of it, right? You, let's mm. say it's 90, 95% of your potential. You already, yeah. you already got that, uh, as a pro so in order for you to make changes you need a good period of time where you're in the gym you got sufficient calories you're not traveling you can just concentrate and grow for most of the year like right. eight nine months and yeah. then you're gonna get you know you're gonna come down slowly for the show that way maybe you can improve but like you know let, let's say you go to the olympia right you're going to olympia you're in shape in order to do that, you probably lost a bit of muscle, right? Even under perfect circumstances, even taking the, whatever you want to take performance enhancing wise, you're going to lose a little bit, yeah? So then you need to like rest. There's a few weeks, right? Now I need to get back in the gym and, and to get back to where I was in the first place. For me, you're talking about it's already December, January. Yeah. How are you going to now get ready for the Arnold or something? Because you. Yeah. You just got back to point A, so you're not really having time to, to right. make the improvements. Right. Yeah, that's I found myself uh doing that. Um, but I you know, one thing I I want to mention is that, you know, you know, throughout those years and then when I was finally just gonna say, Okay, I'm gonna go train with Dorian. Then I was waiting, I said I'm gonna be in I'm gonna go fly to Jersey and then from there when you tell me is right. Remember I say, yeah. okay, when I come over, okay, we're gonna do this. Okay, I'm gonna do this. And so I'm like 295 at the time. And uh, I was like, I had abs already. I had like 12, 12 weeks to go. And 
I remember one time you said when that when I first like made my jump towards the title, you said that uh, I was guest posing. You said, "Man, I saw you." I said, "I didn't think you were gonna make this this shape," but to me, I was I was fine. It was like I thought, you know, the way I go about my my cardio, my you know my burning session, my posing, my everything, I was fine. But to you, you would have been leaner. Than what I was. Remember you said that. Yeah, I was like to, uh, to cruise in, man. Um, well, listen, I don't know, man. You're you're in the middle of your contest prep when we were in Qatar that time, Middle East, right? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, hey, I'm gonna come back with you to Amsterdam for a few days. So I'm like, yeah, cool. So I got a girlfriend in Amsterdam at the time. I'll call her up. I say, hey, listen, you know, Chris is coming. He's in a contest prep and everything. Make sure. Get a lot of chicken breasts. Get this. Get that. But Make that sure you got show, all the food there. But I think that was a show for. I think is that the one that was by the zoo, right? That yeah, by the zoo. Yeah, yeah. But I think that was the show. Your show. I don't know, but anyway, you were like seven yeah, or eight weeks show. out. Yeah, seven or eight weeks. So I call up the girlfriend. I say, hey, you know, make sure we got all the right stuff and everything. She's like, okay, okay. So she's gone shopping. <laughs> and then uh, we're in the kitchen, and she's making this big ass sandwich with the mayonnaise and all kind of shit. I don't know what it was. <laughs> and you're looking over, and you're like, "Hey, uh, can <laughs> yeah, I have one of those?" Yeah, I was <laughs> and she's looking at me like, well, "I don't know." <laughs> she's like, "I got all this stuff for him." I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know what he's doing." Then in the morning, you're eating the kiddies cocoa pops, you know, the chocolate cereals. <laughs> I'm like, how is he doing this? And it's still getting in shape. And we went out nightclubbing as well. So I'm like, man, what if you didn't do all those little things that's not really yeah. good? How much difference would that add up to? That's the thing, right? But if, yeah, if, 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 if that was the element of, you know, the, 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 the food year around like that, that would have been a whole other story. Yeah. And you, you, in hindsight, you could think, oh, man, what about if this guy, if he ate like that, like this, you know, I, I was thinking like this guy, like this kid Rubio you met yeah. yesterday, like same thing, like if he ate like that year round and he just trained like that and did like that, that that's- It'd almost be in shape yeah. already. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was smoke. So that's the thing, you know, when you're younger and when you, you're like, oh, okay, I, I can get away with this and I can get away with that. But what well, about you must have just like took not... a few days off, right? And then please tell me that you then went back on your diet and went. Oh yeah, oh yeah, like, oh yeah. How the hell is it getting oh, away yeah, with this, oh, man? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you have a little break and then you're back on it, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but uh, and I never. I so never, you're in New Jersey. But wait, two ninety five, right? Two ninety five, and then uh, when I was in Amsterdam, because I'd go there for like four months at a time, and yeah. then I was taking all this 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 stuff. And I wasn't cleaning and stuff. Now we're going to talk more about the stuff, yeah, because I know you guys are yeah. like, eh, eh, but you, but it's all steroids. Eh, <laughs> don't tough. worry. Yeah, we got to go. We should acknowledge that. this. Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, next thing you know, when I got back to the states, uh, two weeks later, I had started to sweat one day, and I had a, like a lump in my shoulder. I'm like, damn. But you know, like I said before, when you make a decision to do a left or a right turn. At a light, yeah, <clears throat> that can that can have a lot to do with the rest of your life or whatever. So, I had got an infection and then uh, bacteria was in my system, and then I just had to. So, doc are we assuming that you got an infection from a shot? Maybe yeah, from a shot. All yeah. right. So the but nothing showed up till like two weeks later. I was off everything at this point, and it showed up, and I was like, damn. So I hit up this doctor friend of mine. I should have just went to the hospital, and I would have changed everything. Was that it uh, Winstrol? By I don't remember what it was. It was just, I was, it was abundance. Uh, okay. <laughs> it was an abundance. I think sometimes if you got too much oil in the tissue, it doesn't disperse properly. Yeah, that can be yeah. a problem. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, got some antibiotics. It was the wrong antibiotics. It just calmed it down, but it didn't dissipate the whole thing yeah. out of my shoulder. And so, when I went to, uh, to Bo's house, I was with Bo. And we were training, and uh, he, uh, you know, he saw. He was like, "Man, I was like, I was fucking gonna be. I feel like I was gonna beat everybody for yeah. sure." And that's when you know Dexter won it that year. But I thought, you know, coming down, I would have been at least, at least two sixty solid uh, from that point. And um, that's when 
my back started hurting one morning and I was like, shit. <clears throat> I was like thinking, oh, it's just an old injury, my L4, L5 from back in the day. You know, I just need a bit more time. I iced it a little bit, but it started getting worse and worse and worse throughout the day. And that's when I was so the like, infection from the shoulder got in, into the bloodstream and into yeah. my weakest point in my body, which is my back. Where the, where the disc was damaged yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where it settled in, and that's where it's like uh, it, it made you know it made some it changed my my spine. It goes like a little left and a right right there now, yeah. and. Uh, you know, being going into the hospital, I was under the hospital care for like six months. <clears throat> I uh, was in a so you in, you were in the coma. hospital, yeah, for six and, months. Yeah, wow, induced I didn't coma. Know I was in I, that long. But I was I was I'd pay to get out, but that was costing me a thousand bucks a week, and it was just bleeding my money dry because I was losing sponsorships also at the same yeah. time, and I was just like, oh my yeah, because God. of your reputation and people yeah. knew that you party and you're a drug user. It was like Chris's. Yeah. You know, OD or that was the <laughs> word, right? Whatever it was, not yeah. Um, so it was the so being in that. So when I woke up out of the coma, I haven't used the bathroom in over a month and a half. None of that. So it was just like I couldn't even. It was like I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So with when they start giving me the, I was in a body cast. I didn't know I couldn't walk. I was just thought when I woke up, my legs were all gone. Cause I had big so legs you were out time. for a month. Yeah, a month and a half. You and remember I, anything about that? No, I just it went. Just, it was just dark. Nothing. No, it was nothing. It was just dark, and um, just waking up, and it was just, it was just like telling me what happened in the UFC, what happened in the, you know, uh, different stuff that was going on. I'm still thinking I'm doing the Olympia. I'm still thinking I'm going to Dorian's and I'm gonna be doing Olympia. To, yeah, because you remember what yeah, you remember yeah. like before like this, you went to sleep. I they guess. were like, Chris, you can't even walk. I said, what are you? I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, like I'm in the body cast now, and I'm like, oh man. You Why know, couldn't you walk? Because the nerves are affected. Yeah, all my whole nervous system was just fucked. Every I couldn't even move. Plus, you hadn't moved, right? Yeah, I, and I couldn't move two inches one way or the other because there was so much pain all over my body after the infection thing. Just trying to get back on my feet, trying to trying to get. You know, I was on the East when is Coast. This is like two thousand or something. Two thousand six, I think. Okay. And uh, seven or whatever the hell. Two thousand seven, you came to train with me, I believe. Was it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so that was that was when I was back up my on my feet enough because I was like. I needed to finish doing that. I needed to like this is what I was gonna do, and I gotta I gotta finish doing that. And that's that part right there. It's funny I'm wearing that shirt today. Uh, when I was uh, when I went there, <clears throat> then I was pissed because I was like, okay, so it started out like I didn't get much sleep because I was jet lagged. I just got to your house. <clears throat> I'm I'm just up up up. And then we got it's two two hours before we had to go into the gym. I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, <laughs> "Oh shit!" I'm like, "Fuck! I'm dead." <laughs> yeah, but if you can handle it under those circumstances, then it's only going to get better, isn't it? You know? <laughs> in it, <laughs> in it, mate. In it, man. Yeah. So I was like, "Fuck!" So then we went down went downstairs, and I'm like, "Okay, we're gonna get some get some food in." And I'm like. I mean, you gave me that one. What's that one drink? The your pre workout. Pre workout. Yeah. yeah. The Nox pump. Yeah. Oh. So I had that shit going, and so I'm like, you know, that, that was in my headphone days. So I was just like, okay, I'm getting all pumped up. I'm sitting here waiting. You you walking around? You're like, warm up, Chris. Warm up. I'm like, okay. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and you walking around. You doing stuff. You go. You gonna warm up? I said, yeah. I said, no. I said, no. I'm gonna save my strength for the <laughs> for the workout. You're like, if you're not gonna warm up, I'm not gonna train you. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. All right, all right. So I started pumping on the fucking bike, and then I and then um, I said, okay, we're gonna do leg extensions first. We do leg extensions, okay. And you know, Robbie Robbie was a dog. You know, when it came to that, you know. Yeah. But when I started training i was more into the the repetition if i can get 20 or 30 that you know great yeah but you, that's not 
you know, the idea of what it's all about. So I started understanding that more and more as I started. So we did the 15, then, you know, we started controlling the weight more and uh, all that stuff. It was just a different feeling. I was like, oh, shit, this fucking burns, right? But, you know, I went through the second set, it'll burn, it burned more. I was like, okay, so when we start going to the, the hardest one, uh, you know, just from knowing you over, the, what, the last 20, 25, four years, whatever it's been at the time, I remember walking out of my, the door and my mother's like, stop me, my first organized athletic event type thing. She's like, your coach is like an extension of your parents. When they say to do something, this is exactly what you do. You know, she had that instilled yeah. in me from, from two years old, three years old. Otherwise, you know, so, what's the point of the coach? Yeah, when, yeah. when I want to be a pro, you know, that was that was my mindset behind it. So so then, and then just knowing you for so long and just understanding your voice pattern, you know, all this stuff, it made me hype more. It wasn't like someone don't know you, they meet you and you, you go, yeah, yeah. you go, go on! And, you know, I hear people mocking you all the time, like, again, again, <laughs> again, one like, more, bro, you're not, you're not fucking doing this. And it don't affect anyone the same. It's not the same, just stop. So I was just like, so, so then it was just something just turned on. Like, I can't hardly explain it, but when you said to do something, like I did it to the fucking T. Like well, was, you, know you know that I know and I can do, I do it myself and I'm not asking to do something yeah. you can't. It's like, I'm just, I, I like to show people, yeah. hey, you but, can fucking do this, man. I know, but the, the analogies you said and did and, you know, did, you know talked about, and the whole thing, I, I just took it, just like I say, I've been in the gym since I was a little kid, so what I'm what I'm thinking during the set and during the rep, it was just like, I could feel it and I could see it and it was just everything connected all yeah. at one time and I could see everything happening when I was doing it and I could see the negative, I could see the, 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 the positive part and I could see when I was contracting, I could see it in my mind, I could see the muscle working and the uh, the anatomy, uh, the anatomy of the muscles, and everything like that. It was just so pure and so. It's like a. It's it kind was, of a meditation, yeah, but in an aggressive way. Yeah, you know, you're, you're fully like, in this moment, right? Yeah. So when you say something to do something hard or whatever like that, my shit, I just fucking went to the limit with it, just like, bam, and so that was fucking shocking because that was like. That's I never was able to get to that level. You had of, another of gear in your car. You didn't know about but, it. Huh? Yeah, I did not know. And then the and then the sad thing, one of the saddest things about the whole thing, I was forty three years old now, yeah. and I fucking waited too long. And that's that's where a lot of people do. Even to this day, I see it, and they wait so long. And the next thing you know, that shit's over, and they never went to where they're supposed to go. And then you know whatever happens after that but it's just a sad part of what uh that was the most regretful part of my career uh, was not having a clear understanding of being to that level and most people been in the gym their whole life and they still don't get to that level i know that i know that for I, a fact so many people train with me like i do a certification course right <clears throat> so the guys that come to do it the normally already Dorian fans. Some of them are really advanced, like, uh, you know, almost pro level, high amateurs, PTs. They got a lot of clients. They they, they said, look, I read the book. I, I did the video, I, everything, <laughs> right? I've done everything. But until until yeah. you actually do it and all the little things and this and that and, and with the mind, the mind is in, is, is in control, right? So the body's going to stop when the mind is like, nah, I can't do any more. So, but there's always a bit more. I know, it, you know, I know, I know it's like that, but it's like I don't think anyone can. Here's here's the thing, man. I I'm gonna put it out to you like this. I don't think anyone gets it like I get it, like I get you, no. and got through that workout. I don't I don't care who it is. Just from knowing you that length of time, and then being more mature to accept and to see and to feel and have thousands and thousands of reps behind me before then, and then going to that level to that time i don't think anyone gets it like i get it and i i challenge anyone on that because i see things 
And just the things, like, think about this. Anything you said that day, I was like a sponge to it, and I will never forget it, and I will never forget the way it sounded when you said it, and I can never forget the feeling I had when I did it. And uh, I remember I was laying on my back, and you was, you was saying, man, you just got to go back to the basics. And you was like, and then the, the camera was capturing shit, but it's like, it was no camera there. It was just, yeah, I, it was just white, and it was just you, and it was just. By the way, I didn't, it was like, I didn't know where you were, man. I was like, <laughs> we did the hack squats, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I must have talked to the or talked to somebody, something. And yeah, then I look around, like, and I'm like, where, rock. where is this Chris, man? <laughs> It's like, I think it went upstairs. The camera guy just went up there as well. Oh, no. It's like, all right. <laughs> go up there. I said, come Dude, on, I, We I still just, got hamstrings to do, though, in a minute. I was just like, uh, fucking bitch. I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is bullshit. Yeah, but look now, man. You, oh. you're, you're successfully helping and coaching other people and passing on oh, everything yeah. that you learned all over these years. But right? it's like, and but I just feel like, you know, some of these guys that I train, I feel, I, I always tell them, I, I said, just pretend you're a white belt, and that's yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna yeah. teach you from the ground up. Don't just forget about what you learned before this point, because this is what we're gonna do. And then, and I, I just take people to different levels because I don't think they can get it 100 percent right away. And you know that you got to put in the reps in the it, right way. I think it's a uh, but people think it's a that. skill. Yeah, you know, it don't look like a skill lifting weights, but it really is. Like you got to position your body right. You got to use the right muscles. You got to eliminate momentum. You got to keep the right angle. Just like all dancing, this stuff. Just you got to like, you got to yeah. vision the muscle. You got to know yeah. how it works. You got to yeah. feel it work and do in that range of motion. There's a lot of stuff to learn. <clears throat> That's why if you're a mm. beginner, is it's probably okay to do more sets because you actually learn to get that connection with the muscle and everything that. I just I feel, mean, you know, I can do that in one, one go. I just right? feel people trying to be a beginner, but trying to be like the Dorian Yates from a beginner to Dorian Yates style, or whatever. But I just think there's so much they need to learn between trying to be a beginner to a, an Olympian and a, a multiple, multiple time winning, six time champion of the world. How are you gonna go from beginning to just that? Like you, you got to do well, all the shit in between. Of, a lot of. Uh... But that's what I see. Experience and time between. That's what I see a lot. Yeah, we used to, I mean, we used to have in the magazines, beginner routines, intermediate, and it wasn't totally correct, but at least they acknowledge that, like, you're not going to just start today and start doing the same thing yeah. that somebody did. But I got, I got, as a professional. I, got, I have a couple of guys that, you know, they'll go through it. Um, they'll go through it. You know, well, but, but a lot of but a lot of people don't want to go through it, and that's the frustrating part. And I've called you many yeah, times yeah. when I'm super frustrated about what the fuck is going on with this guy, and I'm like, bro, it's like I mean, me. you're a I'm coach, like doing, right? You're I'm a like coach. Doing, <laughs> like you're a coach. You can only like, you know, like they say, you can take the horse to the water, but the, ho the drink the horse has got to drink it, right? So you can only do your best, and not everybody's gonna be somebody that can give a hundred percent. But I understand if you it. get them to give. If they were given 80 and you got them to give 90, then it's I, still an improvement, right? But I, I understand it all because I've been there yeah, before. I've yeah. been to all these different mindsets. I've been through it all. So when they're not ready, they're not well, ready. Well, that's why you're a good coach yeah. because you've fucking been there. Like, yeah. you know, like you got somebody that's, I don't know, sat down and done an online exam. I mean, just, I know. <laughs> <laughs> there, I there's companies in the UK, I know. I don't know about anywhere else, but I know there's companies in the UK yeah, where you can do everything online. I know. It's like just videos. Too. They don't even see you. I know. Yo, I'll send you a video. Know. This is me doing a bench press. Oh, that's correct. Well done. And, and I didn't learn that way. You can't really be a coach. I didn't like learn that, that you way. You got to do stuff, man. It's like, uh, you know. And then when I, even when I left you, I still went to school and learned more about every little thing. I connected more dots, but yeah. just, the, just learning from you and then get in the you know i'm in the classroom for eight and ten hours just about training yeah, and that's when i'm in my background and that's in my mid from. and that's in my mid 40s like yeah. not many people do that and i know for a fact they don't want to do that but yet in doing so uh you know it just increased everything even more so and i was able to do all the little things that uh like i say we talked about that changed my fucking life that day though and i remember um how i felt and when people come into it is uh i mean it's not just the, the i think is the most efficient way to build muscles of course there's different ways but um 
when I do the camp with people, and so we do like a week of real training and and talking as well. I spend time with them. I see, so uh, I've, I you know I'm pretty good at judging people's psychologies, what they need to hear, what will help them, and what won't help them, and all this stuff. So how do, how do you do that when if you don't really know these people? Like I think yeah, you, listen, I think you, you put knew somebody me. in the gym, and you put them under stress in the gym. You start you you see things, you pick up things about people, and. Mm -hmm. Maybe this guy needs some, you know, he don't really believe himself enough. I need to give him, and I never bullshit people. So if I say something to you that's positive, then it's really because I mean it. It's not, mm -hmm. otherwise I won't say anything. Like, well, I say nothing, yeah? So, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but at the end of the week, the point is I just see like, like happier, stronger people, like mentally. They've been through this process. They know, they've surprised themselves even that so, what they can do. Because so the, I, I opened the door by saying whatever, blah, blah. And a lot of not even competitors. Correct? No, no, I'm only, mainly the people that I coach, they're not competitors. Um, because a lot of time when people get to be competitors, they've got a bit of ego about the thing and they oh, think yeah. they already know. Oh, yeah. They already know stuff. Trust so, me. I mean, they're not so open and willing to learn where the people that's not got to that level. It seems like they're more, they want to learn, you know, they're there to learn, you know, and other people, they've got their own ideas, a bit rigid, and they're not so open to learning. So what about the, the course itself? Like, how, take me through that, like, you meet, but yeah, you, you meet know, I don't know, at Golds, when you were there, I've done Golds yeah. a few times, I do it out here. I know, here. but I, and I've been stood around, and I, I was listening to different stuff, and so I was joined First in of all, like, they get the theory, the you know, they get all the theory info, so they can read about the theory. Well, theory is not the main thing, man, because, you know, you got to do something. As we said, you can read all the books you want about getting punched in the face until it <laughs> yeah. happens, right? <laughs> it's the same kind of thing, man. you got to do it, right? <laughs> so they learn the theory, and then they come to the gym. Just I have only six people, so I do three people at a time, three and three. We go through the workouts. Really, I'm training them, but I'm showing them how I'm spotting them, how I'm motivating them, and then they learn to do that with each other. So they're not just doing it, but they're doing it, and they're teaching. I take turns in, in teaching and everything. And then we spend some time, we have some lunch, and then it's like conversations come up, and I'm always listening, and I, I think what this guy could do with some help in this or that, and a little bit of psychology with the people. So at the end of the week, uh, they've gone through all the workouts, We've talked about everything they want to talk about, and they do an online exam. Again, it's theory, and I don't put too much weight in that, but they, you know, you should know all the basic points and the, the history mm -hmm. of the system and all that stuff. But they've gone through, and I do four days in a row, which normally we'd never do that, right? Four days in a row, high-intensity training. But I do it because I want them to feel uncomfortable. Because at, and at the end of the week, the last oh. day is the leg day, and you know that's like, oh, that's shit. really testing the limits. Yeah, it is. But everybody like finds that extra gear because I help them to find that extra gear, and then I tell them like, "Look, you see what you did? I didn't do it for you. I didn't lift the weights. I just said something which triggered something in your mind. So what you got to figure out now is how to turn that on yourself. What whatever that might be. I used to have mad thoughts, man, when I was training. Like I got my little my son right. I'm like somebody like. They're trying to beat me. They're trying to take money. They're trying to take food off my kid's table and whatever, like, get me in a in a mood. I mean, everyone's different. Like, you got to find that trigger that gets you, you in the zone a little bit. And that's not headphones on your head. No, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I confiscated your made, headphones. I made that fucking... <laughs> I made that... Uh, that mistake. I'm not here to party, Chris. Give me your headphones. Put them so, behind here. Because... So, only because I wanted your... <laughs> I wanted your attention. So, yeah. so you know, for people listening to this, like my whole career, I've always had headphones in my ear. Even before it was a cool thing, before I know people had it hanging off their head a certain way or whatever. Before all those people, I was listening to the Walkman with the fucking disc on my side, full on CD disc. A CD disc to you young kids is like a disc that we would put inside of something. Like and a it DVD. Will, yeah, and it can scratch and it could be chipping all this stuff until it got more and more and more sophisticated down the line. But that's how long ago I've been used to having music in my ears. And then I didn't really listen to a lot of instruction throughout the repetition and stuff because it was like, you know, I'm just moving weight and whatever. So <laughs> I'm listening to music my whole career. And then all of a sudden I get out there to England 
I'm I'm uh, about to have one of the biggest sets of my life, and then Dorian is, is chirping at me about taking the headphones off, and I'm like, damn, dude. I was like, so then I like I've had put one in my ear, and Dorian's looking at me like, bro, you need to take the fucking headphones <laughs> off your ear, and then <laughs> I still got them around my neck. <laughs> And then Dory's like looking at give me, me like, things. give me them things. <laughs> <laughs> and he went put them behind the desk at the fucking, and I'm sitting like a little kid. I'm just like, oh, man. <laughs> and so my headphones behind the desk. I'm like, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to be all in on this shit. In and, the then, room, uh, and then uh, you know, I start going through my set of, you know, like a powerful set of leg extensions. Boom, boom. Next thing you know, start to get a little uncomfortable. Like oh shit, I'm gonna I gotta pull a cord in this pressure. <laughs> pull a cord. So then I fucking I'm like I'm going to get off the machine because it's like okay I'm really uncomfortable now. Then Dorian went boom with his shoulder, and I was like, I was like, did I tell you to stop? And I was like, oh, I'm carrying bitch. You got so another two or three. So that was like that set the tone right there. Now now I'm like oh fuck. Like that, okay, this like I'm in a fight for my fucking life now. And it was like only thing on my mind was just like, you know, give him all through in a set, knowing I'm not gonna actually die from it, but uh, you know, it then it was I was I was I was ready to go at that point. And uh, you know, never no one's ever shoulder blocked me back into a set before. So I didn't expect that, but I think I don't know. It just it it changed everything for me that day. Changed it, changed it all right then and there. Now I know I need to put. It's not a, you know. Some people I feel like they let that mechanism go in their mind to where, oh, I'm gonna let off like I'm working hard, but I'm not gonna go all in on it. And I had a lot of people do that shit to me. And well, it's it that little bit that's gonna give you the results, especially at yeah. that level when you're. You know, you're starting to max out your genetics, right? So every little bit is going to count. I have fools trying to fake. Oh, you fools, know, you, you can tell, to, right? Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I have fools trying to fake the nervous system shake on uh, me so I, could, so I can have pity So you on take him. it easy on yeah, them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, bro, that's not going to work. I don't give a fuck about what you're doing. Or well, whatever. The thing is that they're just cheating themselves, man. It's like lying to yourself. Like your body knows... If yeah. you're not going to the max of your ability, it's got no reason to change. Why, why is it going to change? You can't fool your fucking body. You might try to fool yourself or your coach, but you, yeah. you know, yeah, you're, not, yeah. you're not fooling your body. It's not going to change unless it has a good reason. Right, right. Yeah. And that's the thing that, and, and how about this, though? And you could actually tell, like, let's say you go to a show, you could tell someone's uh, training style or not training style, but you could tell what they do in a gym by looking at their body. Pretty I, much. And you could read, okay, this guy obviously uses too much arms when he does, does his back. Or this guy uh, is all, <laughs> this guy's using too much of this or whatever. They, uh, they're I, not... I saw Paul Delay. You know, you know, listen, guys, check him out if you don't know. Paul, is, his <laughs> arms is like legs, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to say who his coach was at the time. But mm -hmm. I saw him doing pull downs like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no wonder he got no back. Yeah. And the very well-known coach that yeah. was there was just counting like one, two. Yeah, like, yeah. What? Okay with it. Yeah, it's no wonder. It's, it's, not, it's not even connecting with the lats properly. The even with that change right there, where where could have <clears throat> that style or that mindset when I was 43, where could my body have gone if I had that in my early 30s or my you know late 20s? That would have been, you know, like I say, that mature mindset with along. I don't know if you remember, else. Chris. I told you the story. What's that story? I said, Chris. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah, need yeah. to I come know, there I know. because I know. I otherwise, know. I when know. you're an old man and you're sitting in your chair, rocking, I could have done this on. I could have done that. I could have done that. Yeah, I remember. No, but seriously, how do you, how do you feel about that, man? Like, uh, I remember the day you said that. But how you feel about like feeling like. Do you feel like there's unfulfilled potential there, and like? Yeah, of uh, course. I, I'm, how do you feel about that now? I man. just don't. I don't like the fact that, uh, and I just think here's a, here's another thing. You know, people have a misconception of thinking that I went to parties or I went to whatever. That was 
that was the downfall. No, well, the that, was, down, that was your image. That, so that was that what was, everyone but, thought was your downfall. But the downfall was actually the maturity of the mind and the, the you know, knowing I'm having distractions but trying yeah. to still be this person that, you know, it was, if you go back and think, you know, sometimes in my earlier career, it'd be like 30 people in my room uh, at a time when I'm focusing on was, the night before the contest or, or, or the, or the day or even then, and then, and right after the con contest, you know? So, and then slowly I started, you know what? Wasn't, wasn't there anybody like around you that was like, Hey, Chris, come on, you got to cut well, yourself he, off well, from all these people and you got to do this and you got to do that. Or yeah. Yeah. Paul was like that. Yeah. And I, I just took it in the, not the right way. I, yeah. I took it not the right way. I should have took it in a constructive He's just prison. trying to stop my fun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, I'm having fun, so you don't want me to have it. You know, that type of shit. But yeah, yeah, Paul was, and then, you know, Flex and Rico and them, they were, you know, but at the time it was like, I'm deflecting fucking shit that you don't need to deflect or whatever. But did you lose time? I mean, um, like how much were you partying and did that like cut into your time like well i'm supposed to be in the gym today but i, I no it I ain't wasn't really it wasn't really like that cuz i was like i would I'd still or... go yeah i'd still yeah. go i would still go that's the the thing but was it was it productive go was it was i gaining muscle was i tearing it down properly in the gym was i getting the right amount you know that's that's one thing but i definitely would these, go these were all my questions it was like look there's like leaks here you know Losing yeah. energy, losing, losing. Yeah. I mean, fuck, and then, if the guy didn't do all those leaks, and then what would it look? That was what that I was thinking. What would it look like if he? Yeah, I wasn't. You know? I wasn't living it right, man. I was. I mean, I'm. I'm in this high profile vehicles and getting pulled over and fucking getting all in kind of little mischief there and making road rides to fucking Mexico. Yeah. And going, you know. There's a whole like well, negative all kind energy. of shit. It's like a I negative got a fucking, energy world I got, around this. I got a fucking ex suspended license and shit. <laughs> I just every shit, shit's just wrong. You know, not you're not living the the, the how what? how uh, all these different elements can just give you more and more. So it's like little leaks. It's taking yeah. time away. It's taking time away. And then after a contest, what you take some time off and you just just a month off because I was off. doing, and then you're partying or something, and I, right? And I'm doing, month. yeah, yeah, just whatever chilling. you want to do, yeah, whatever doing. I want to do. So at, at some point, I'm I'm guessing at some point, right? You're going out, you're partying, you're doing some ecstasy, you're having a good time. Everyone's yeah. dancing, everyone loves each other, and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Well, later on, it gets to be a bit more, more frequently, and maybe it's getting to be like, I don't know, and like then, what, 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 where was it where you were like, fuck, this is just not fun. This is, did you, were well, you like, I, were you considering yourself when, to be an addict, or it's just a negative thing you couldn't control, or you felt you had control on it, or what? Well, I, the thing is, man, I, I was just like, I had to come to a decision, like, I gotta try to admit I have an issue and I got to fucking do something about it because it was like, a, it was, I mean, but, and that's another thing. Don't, I don't like people, people try to, it wasn't ever my whole career. It was a part of my career. While you were proposed, and like it the was, last few years. Yeah, yeah, it was like a, it was like a, between that 2000 and 2002 in that area yeah. of my life. But people put it on my whole career. This is what I was about. No, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a, a period of my life to where that was, you know, a weekly thing. It wasn't like, and then, but it didn't go all the way. Like when I, okay, I got a show to do. Okay, the last whatever months before the show, I'm going to stop. And yeah. then right after the show, I'm going to have a good time again. But people think I just did it and did it and did it. And no, that's that, why I'm asking you. Like, <laughs> no, get a clear picture because no. I'm like thinking, well, if it is what people thought it was, like out of hell would you be in shape at all these shows and everything? <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe but how arguably did... you were not maybe at your best, but you look fucking great. So it's like you can't be like you gotta be training, yeah. you gotta be on a good diet most of the time, right? But also, yeah, it was that and then but also my you know, I was never married, everybody everybody else was married, but I wasn't married, so 
it was multiple women in my yeah. life that wasn't the, the best to be around. No, that brings a lot of drama. And, and uh, yeah, and so I was going that. through that. I'm fucking, I'm going through a lot of shit uh, in my personal life like that. So I think that along with, you know, the the hanging out, the clubs and doing the going, to, I'm going to a club in New York, I'm going to a club in Orange County. It kind of all goes together though, right? Yeah. The party, that, all the drugs, together. the women, it's all, the women, it's all the same thing, right? Thing, yeah, so. It's taking away your energy from where it should oh be. Oh my God, it's so crazy. So, you know, just being, you know, the people that that don't go, go through that, you think that the body's gonna be even fuller, the muscle's gonna be yeah. probably bigger. Yeah. Uh, and along with the, the training, the way I was training, all that together was like, no, no, my yeah. body's gonna suffer because now I'm not pushing a muscle like I learned to when I was later on in life. That's what I was saying. That was my regret is like I didn't understand that part along with the tra- with everything else. Yeah, but all I mean, those if, together. If you were like training like that in that zone and you was partying and everything as well, then who knows, there's an injury coming up but, or something as well because your body's not recovering. Like, But that mature mind is not going to yeah, have you do that. It's not going to allow all that stuff yeah, to happen. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's the thing, no that, way that's the thing about do, youth, man. Like no way you're your body's at that. your best. Unfortunately, when your body's at the best, you're at your physical peak, I don't know, 25 to 35, whatever, right. physical peak, unfortunately, is not your uh, mental or wisdom peak. You know, that comes right. a lot later right. on, right? Later like, on. Shit, if I'd, only known, <laughs> if I'd only known that then, but that's uh, that's the life, man. And you, it's all about lessons. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any point then, in having regrets and and like and then, beat yourself up about it. It's just and then it's throw lessons, on, right? And throw on top of all of this, you taking the damn. We had the we had the parabola, and we had the fucking finajet. We had the fucking the anabol, the yeah. eight, the anadrol fifty, the you know all that stuff. How's that gonna make you feel sexually? And like, how are you gonna turn up, down? Man. Yeah, how are you gonna turn down some some pussy in a fucking that's tied up in is in a fucking bow for you right there? I mean, there. it's uh, it's discipline. People right? don't talk about well, that. Everyone's though. got their limit about I had um, discipline, yeah. <laughs> Bro, and I, uh, but before the steroids, I was sexual. You know, I, I got like <laughs> I, I, I don't want to eat shitty food like with sugar and everything. <laughs> But I know if it's in the house, I'm gonna eat it. So I asked Gal not to buy shitty food in the house, you know. So I had the same kind of policy. It's like I just keep away from it because, <laughs> I know. like, why test my limits of my <laughs> of my discipline? You exactly. know what I mean? It's gonna crack somewhere. Exactly. So I just uh, stay away from that. I get. I'll visit that later, maybe. Because you know? yeah, yeah. So cause... Let, let's talk a little bit about the steroids then, because otherwise, the most important subject is like. You know, I always get these comments. No matter what I put on my page, about, <laughs> I know, I know. You yeah, ever what about the steroids? <laughs> <laughs> you know, even, even but, I'm uh, talking about posing. Like, yeah, but you take steroids. I'm like, yeah, I fucking acknowledge that all the time. Man. I, I was mean, like, do I, I need mean, to say that? <laughs> I should preempt anything I say by saying, yes, I took steroids. And then, can we get back to the subject? <laughs> so, uh, when when did that journey start for you? And like. Oh man, bro! What what did you use? How much? All you know, all the stuff that people want to know, and then later on yeah. they'll tell you that you're bullshit. That I'm bullshit. <laughs> all right, yeah, but they gotta try to understand this. When I was in in college, um, I was uh, I met some guy, and he had back in the day it was called the rugby, and he had these uh, Dynaball pills. They were five milligrams. Yeah, and they were. I think it's an octagon shape. That's the first thing I ever took. They were like little capsules, but it's different brands. It's the same yeah. thing, right? D-ball. And, um, and so I took it, and it made me dizzy as fuck. I was like, what the fuck, dude? I was like, I'm not going to take this shit. But I, I didn't understand yeah, that the, yeah. chemical, the chemicals in your system is going to make you feel a little different, especially if when you first start taking something. And, you know, in... I can imagine what it's like for women that go that route, how what it's like for them, and you know, mentally. Uh, and, I think it's going to be a big problem for women. Oh yeah. In the future. Uh, oh yeah. Like oh, kind of, yeah. it's kind of going to be an addiction because it's going to make it makes so much difference even to your, yeah, your mindset. Mindset that it's, or everything uh, on everything is depressing to lose yeah. it. You don't want, you don't want to give it up. Nope. So, so on the merry-go-round. So, yeah. Be careful. <laughs> 
Don't get on the merry-go-round. You can't get off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that one pill made me dizzy, and I, um, I remember I was in college. And I was going. I went to the gym, and I was like, maybe like a week later, and I was like five pounds heavier. I was like, oh shit. I was like, I don't think it was that bad. You know, it didn't affect me that bad. Yeah, let's try it over. So I went to go look for the guy again. Yeah. I said, hey, give me those pills back. And then, uh, so he gave them back to me and I started, I just taking one a day. I'm getting stronger and, you know, with my genetics along with, you know, adding that part of it. And I'm super active, you know, in the gym, super, you know, receptive to everything. And my body started growing and growing and growing and growing. Then I was like, okay, I think I'm going to try something else. I said, I'm going to try injecting some testosterone. So then I'm just reading everything I can about everything about, okay, this I should, I could stack this with some testosterone, take one shot a week. And uh, the, then that's another thing. I was not only a shy person, I also didn't, didn't like needles. So I'm like, oh, fuck. I was like, how am I going to do this shit? So then I'm at my buddy's house, and I'm like, hey, man. He was my other bodybuilder buddy in the in the town, Palm Springs. And I said, hey, man, can you do this shot for me? He said, okay. Bro, I was in the bathroom for like an hour. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, every time he got close to it. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 hold on. And then... He's about to do it again. <laughs> he was so fucking mad. He was so mad. <laughs> oh, my buddy John. Well, was, I guess you got over pissed. that fear eventually. Yeah, I had, I had to, you know. But so the thing is, when after my body's just full of sweat, and I was like just paranoid, I was scared, I was everything. And then once he did it, he just went, wham. Yeah, you don't feel anything. But then when he took it out. Blood shot like three fucking feet <laughs> behind me, all on the walls and shit. And I was like, ah, see, I knew this is a bad idea. <laughs> I knew it, you know that type of shit. So it was, it was, uh, that was, that was that scarred, and it, it felt, I felt it left like a little knot there that I had throughout my career. Every time I got in shape, I could see this little knot, and I think it was just so just got a bad shot. Now, yeah, yeah. scarred to do the bad shot. But then you know. The body's growing. I'm starting to gain, gain. You know, I'm like 20 pounds later, and I'm like, is that, oh. is that what you put on your first course? 20 yeah. pounds, because uh, 20 pounds. I think your most dramatic gains is going to be your first course, right? But just those two things, those two yeah, elements. All I had that was D ball. That's why I'm saying for the, you know, <laughs> whoever's listening, kids, they want to do stacking up like multiple shit. Th this is if you're going to use is the best thing to do is to get the maximum result. Uh, out of the, the minimum amount, amount yeah. that you want to have yes because exactly. you you're, you're going to react with a very small amount so why yeah. take a large amount because like where are you going to go from that later on you can't yeah. keep increasing let's increase, say increase, you do turn pro where are you going to so have that's take as, as little as possible to get the result that you want and later on you got more muscle mass you're probably going to need more and think about when so people on. are slamming down a whole bottle in one week yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just like, and what is that doing to you mentally? What is that doing to you, your ego? And what is it doing, feeding all this shit? But it's like, you know, like Dorian said, if you, the little amount as possible is going to give you the effect. Even when you start taking GH, you could. I, my first two years of GH, only did two IUs every other day. And you noticed it. And then noticed it. Yeah, hell yeah. It was just because it was in my system, not because. Yeah. And that's another thing. When I got older. I was taking a little bit, I was taking more, and, it, and oh my God. So <laughs> let me go back to my next cycles. I started to learn more about, okay, I would take some pills, some different stuff, and I just, this, it was just little bits. And then um, just gradually got more and more, but that was always in my mind because I, I learned from Robbie the same sentiment that you you, you mentioned is uh, you got to <clears throat> take the lowest amount as possible to get the results you're looking for, type yeah. of, that type of attitude. Because the, cause, because I wanted to do this long term, and I knew I wanted to be a professional, and I knew that once I turned pro, like where am I going to go from there? Yeah, the stakes was, are going up, and you want to always bring in your my physique mind. up. Yeah, if you got to do everything that's in the sink, kitchen to to get, you know, just to a high amateur level or something, is like you're not meant to be a pro, right? Right, right. 
So that cycle went like that. So then when I started uh, using the test and I started going twice a week with the test and I started, uh, okay, and when I get ready for a show, uh, do I, you know, I got to a point where I'm like, oh, I wanna, you know, try some Anadrol. And, you know, that, every, I was really sensitive to everything at the time. We even had some injectable Anadrol that I got from Mexico. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that was kind of cool. It was just hella strong. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just gradually started adding different things, uh, winning different competitions, but understanding that was what I wanted for bulking cycles. The uh, Sestanon started to creep in there with some, and I always liked Equipoise. I liked Equipoise. Yeah, I don't um, think that's around so much now. Voldenone, Voldenone, yeah. Under Cyclonate or yeah, something. At yeah, at the time we had like Equipoise. Uh, I don't know uh, technically if it's correct, but we used to consider like Boldenone or Equipoise is a bit like Deca, is like a middle middle range or yeah, something. Yeah, it had like a little that. bit of had an androgenic effect and an yeah, anabolic yeah, effect. Yeah. Good effect on me. <laughs> so, and then the anadrol made me like super strong. Um, yeah, the and, anadrol, I, I felt like very strong on that, but. So no, I didn't feel like good outside the gym. I had, uh, my blood pressure was too high, and uh, on Dynaball, you could take less. I felt and like it had a more. You felt better on it, like the Anadrol or something. Yeah, you just don't feel great somehow. <laughs> you know, great in the gym, but outside that, a little bit tired or something. It was like just the general feeling of not. Yeah, and I started to get the the nosebleeds and yeah, stuff. I remember my blood coach, pressure and so on. I remember my coach and I. Uh, in college my last year is like you leave those damn because i'm like in the meetings like this now <laughs> <laughs> like, guess they don't have drug testing in plus college I, football, I, huh? and then uh, they get they cauterize it for me because it was just like because yeah. even when re when i used to wrestle i used to get nosebleeds all the time yeah but if you bang your nose and it bleeds because i yeah. had it when i was a kid i got into fights a few times yeah and just yeah get tapped and it come and it starts bleeding, yeah same you know? thing yeah so yeah, so they cauterized it for me, and then you know. So what? What was like? Just like, also people have to understand when we're talking about, oh, how much stuff were you taking? This is it's early like, on. You're never taking it like all the time, continuously like this. Right, right. So when I tell people, well, yeah, I took up to this, yeah, it was probably for five or six weeks, and then come down, and then come off for a bit, and then do it. So and then it's not up. continuous, yeah. but let's yeah. say like on a peak thing. In the off season, peak off season. like what? Uh, what's the, the prime, highest? Highest? Prime, yeah, the highest prime, dosage that you were kind of up to. In my prime, like I, I was like, okay, if I take more, the most I ever taken was a bottle and a half a week of tests. So that's three thousand milligrams. Right? And I and I went to, I try, I was I was I was good with two anadrol fifties, but I did go to three at yeah. one point, and then this is my highest, highest, highest. Yeah. And I even like what what crashed me down and fucked up my chances of possibly winning a, Olympia was that year two thousand. I was in Mexico City, and I had a bunch of GH with me. And I'm guest posing like every day, and I was like, "Oh man, I'm leaving at this date. I better start taking more so I can finish it out before I leave." And my dumbass, I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to do it. No. I did not need you to. Could have brought it home and or I, left it there. I could have just left it. It would have been fine. Yeah. So fucking what, right? It's not gonna kill me to leave yeah. it. See, so, you know, if I didn't, if that little thing right there, I was two hundred eighty-two pounds. I want to get some photos of that that place. Actually, a guy's gonna meet me in Mexico, in Mexico. City, and he's gonna he's the one that's gonna give me. He he said he got all these photos from that time, and I had two months to go for an Olympia. And I started taking 18 IUs of of, of Serastim a day. That's high, but I heard of people taking that much. But it was more. too high for me, brother. Yeah. Affect it your was, blood sugar? Fuck yeah. yeah. And I fucking almost died from that shit, dude. Really? You yeah, like, because uh, I was in blood the sugar, hospital. You pass out? Yeah, I was in a seizure. I'm having a seizure in Mexico. They can't even pick me up. Because the thing about it, I'm 280 some pounds. You weren't doing insulin with it as well? No. Okay. Because... I wasn't doing insulin when everyone started it. I said, I'm gonna let people do it, run its course, and I wanna see yeah. how it affects their body, yeah. and then I'll do it later on, you know, in my career when I'm, before I'm 
before I'm done. And that's what I did. I didn't do it until 2004. Um, tinker with it just to carve up a little bit. but I, yeah. And I never went past two weeks anyway. I never. It was just too much. It was just too much. So the, t- the your blood sugar must have bombed blood out. Blood sugar. Oh, out. man. And I just remember, I remember them saying. You know, they you give know, kids these amounts, like 40 IUs or, oh you know, or something. Oh, my God. For the kids that don't grow, they're grow sufficient. Shit, I didn't know that amount. Yeah. So I went, so when I went to, I just remember them saying, Chris, if you don't, I just remember everything being super blurry and it was, I was just shaking and um, I said, if you don't get up, you're going to die because we cannot pick you up. That's all I heard. And I was just like, fuck. And I just, I just fucking got up and I, then I had someone on either side of my body and, and I was walking through the, um, through the thing because I tried to go to the, to the, restaurant to get some food okay. because my right. blood sugar started was, feeling start sweating I needed, and, yeah i needed right, some right. fucking carbs I did, and then i was just like panicking i didn't know what to do and then uh next thing you know um you know i said when they were when i was walking out to the ambulance i went out there and then all of a sudden everything's black so i'm in the hospital and i was asleep i don't know i don't know what I went into, but I was not coherent at all. <clears throat> and when I woke up, I saw like, it was just all, I, no. So I'm seeing my grandmother when I'm out. And my mother, my grandmother's been passed a long time, yeah. but she used to call me Chrissy. And my brother, he committed suicide during, um, during the time when I was younger. And he was standing behind her. And then uh, she just reached out. She reached a hand out to me, and I went to reach out my hand to her. And she said, Chrissy, it's not your time like that. And I was like, cool, like that. And then I went like this, and then I woke up. And when I woke up, I saw a nurse, nurse, nurse. And I'm thinking, I saw it was a cross on the wall. I'm like, damn, I'm in fucking, I passed over in the fucking heaven and shit. I'm like, <laughs> and it was like, and then it was the, my interpreter was at the end of the nurse thing. I was like, and she was like, she was crying. She was like, Chris, and she started telling me everything that happened and whatever and this and that. And, and I was like, oh, I'm not in heaven. I was like, so then I was like, I said, okay, this is, this is real. Cause you know, in the, in the hospital in Mexico, you have a cross on every, yeah. yeah. So I just, I thought, I thought I was already, I thought I was there. And not your time, man. Not my time. Yeah. So I always thought that even <laughs> that's why I even, I even went to Qatar that time because my grandma said it is not my time. Yeah. So it's not my time. So I'm gonna because that was like right after 9/11, like two weeks that later. Make, that make you feel comfortable though. You, you think there's something more. Oh yeah. Like after your physical life oh, has expired. Yeah. For sure. I think so. Yeah, I heard many stories like and that. And then, uh, yeah. So that's the thing, man. And you know, so what happened? You you passed out. You're going to a coma. That like, how did that affect? Did it continue to affect you afterwards? Like no, because I it? I didn't know I didn't know what because I didn't understand why at the time. And then later on, a couple of years later, I was just reading a mag reading a, the insert on the Sarah stand. It was like, oh, it can affect your blood sugar. This and that. Yeah. I was like, oh fuck. Cause it's pretty I did, extreme effect. Cause I didn't though, even like, do. You know? I didn't even do. I just went. I just. Call everything off. I'm not yeah. gonna compete. I don't know what's wrong with me, but okay, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm calling. I'll just start waving a white flag, and I'm like, I'm gonna go to. It scared you, right? Yeah, shit. Yeah. And I sat in the audience. I was lean, and I could have done Olympia that year, yeah. and I fucking didn't do it. And that was that was another big mistake because Ronnie was super off. Ronnie was like 280 that time or whatever he was, yeah. but he didn't have much cuts in his body, and I would have been better than I was in '99 and 2000. Cause I just got my gyno cut in '99. I was just gonna. I had a whole different looking look under my chest and everything. <clears throat> and uh, I, I, I feel like I would have beat him. That's what I feel like. Kevin took second, and I forgot who was third. But I was sitting in the audience with. Uh, it wasn't to be, man, for whatever yeah. reason. But uh, I mean, I see you in a good place, man. Like yeah. right now in life, right. You're in a good yeah, place, man. man. You're, you know, you're, 
you're working with people, training people yeah. in the industry. And, and then, doing you know, well, the, the, uh, I got to be honest, man, I did worry about you sometimes. I'm like, well, fuck, what's Chris going to do when he grows up, man? <laughs> yeah, bro, I was I was worried for a minute too, man, because cause I, I did plan on having a longer career than what I had it. I planned yeah. on all this stuff, and it didn't happen that way. And I'm like, fuck, what the hell am I going to do? Because... Yeah, we think we got plans sometimes in life. It's even when I left plans. you, even like you was like Chris, he's like we got to pull the plug because I was because yeah, you were gonna help me. Up, man. It was, you were gonna help me and so and uh, we was gonna you know do this thing together and I would have I would have spent the time in England and did what I had to do. But you know, I was like I start posing for you. He's like, hmm, Chris. No, it was when, it was when we did the chest workout. Yeah, because you tore your tricep. Yeah, and I wasn't as strong as I was. I was doing three. It, it's like a, not as bad as mine, but I knew like because I had the surgery after '97, and reattached the tendon, but there was a tear in the muscle as well. So it looked different, but not only that, it just was so much Hell weaker than the other side. Oh, and man. then it's like, ah, I mean, you're gonna get it. That's the, you that's, know. Then it starts hurting your shoulder, and it, then it's a domino like, effect. Can't do it, it, man. You just yeah. can't do it. It's like, I think once you get one major injury, like because I had the bicep. It affects everything a little bit, and later on, it like the stress goes somewhere else and get another little injury. You've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of times with people when they get one injury like that. And the fucked up thing is, I did it on a bicycle ride on a damn BMX track. It wasn't even in a gym or anything like that. I just yeah. fell, and that's you know, it's just like I said, it's another life lessons, and you try to you can guide people, but you know, it's always something can happen. On I mean, you can walk off a curb and tear your ACL or some shit. Yeah. Or, you know. Well, I think you learn a lot, man. And I like, of all, I mean, I'm closest to you out of all the guys. I'm not really close to anyone else. Right. Um, right. Because I think you, I think you see things differently, maybe because you spend a lot of time outside the States. Yeah. Like you spend time with me in England. You've been yeah, in yeah. Holland. Yeah, yeah. And oh, you've yeah. been everywhere around. Uh, so you got like a well-rounded, um, Knowledge of the of the world and people and different attitudes and everything like that which oh, yeah. make you a good communicator and a good uh, a good coach. Right. And uh, I'm a, I'm a happy man. I'm happy Thank to you, see brother. you doing really well. Thank you, like, man. Uh, yeah, man. But anyway, brother, Chris Cormier. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you man. Glad to have you as my first Thank guest you, in man. the studio. Yes, smoking weed and chilling <laughs> out. Uh, Thank you very much from the Shadow Talk. <laughs>